shut up. <laughs> Don't tell me to shut up. Fine, throw up. Stop fucking bitching me. Who am I bitching? She was. <laughs> America's first digital media generation at war. Let's go, Charlie. We like war. We're a warlike people. We like war because we're good at it. You know why we're good at it? Because we get a lot of practice. We average a major war every 20 years in this country, so we're good at it. Hell yeah, yeah bitches! Grenada, Libya, you got some brown people in your country, tell them to watch the fuck out, or we'll goddamn bomb them. To me, war is a lot of prick waving. War is a whole lot of men standing out in the field waving their pricks at one another. Men are insecure about the size of their dicks, and so they have to kill one another over the idea. In this particular case, Saddam Hussein had questioned the size of George Bush's dick. Stone Magazine contributor Evan Wright was embedded with the Marines' 1st Reconnaissance Battalion on the road to Baghdad. His new book about their ultra-violent culture is called Generation Kill. They were raised by television, Hollywood movies, video games, internet porn. I mean, that stuff was available to them from a very young age, and that's sort of how they were acculturated into society. For seven days, you have now plagued my life, Hotel. But now, the end is near. And all these people, they will learn to stop worshipping Allah and start worshipping the 2,000 pound JDM that's about to fuck their whole world up. In Vietnam, the whole story is of a generation of Americans that were innocent and they lost that innocence in the jungles of Southeast Asia. And in this case, I, these guys were raised on violent video games, movies, and a presidential sex scandal involving President Clinton. So these guys, I always tell people, were sort of pre-jaded. So, what do you see in that little uh, camera thing you got there? I, I think I see you. Seeing me. You got it all on camera. Oh. Do you? Yeah, oh yeah! <laughs> hey, do you want candy? I don't have any candy. You want hand grenade? <laughs> I'm listening to Tupac. Give me a Mike, it's your birthday. Mike, keep running. Here. 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 Oh, so cute, so cute. Little puppy. Oh, 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 a trip. Oh. Hello, Mike. Hi. That's mean. Come with me. Hail Mary. Now, I thought this was pretty cool. Two of our uh, guys serving in Iraq, Staff Sergeants Matt Wright and Josh Jobs, they can't be here tonight because they're in Iraq. But they, they saw this digital short on Saturday Night Live called Lazy Sunday. They did their own parody of it called Lady, L Lazy Ramadi, okay? Now, if you want to see the whole thing, you can go to YouTube.com. Lazy Ramadi, the sun and the heat. Crazy Ramadi, bombs under the street. I hate Ramadi, but there's no need to moan. Because the U.S. In a flood of home videos sent home. back to families from soldiers in Iraq, Wright and Dobbs' Lazy Ramadi struck a pop cultural chord. Researchers call it the most downloaded Iraq war video on the internet.
Lazy Ramadi. Lazy Ramadi. Lazy Ramadi. Lazy Ramadi. Two. No, six. No, twelve. Make a There is a need, there is a desire to tell people back home, whoever they might be and wherever they might be, here's what's going on, here's what's going on in my life. We take it, I think, sometimes for granted that we can talk to them every day, that we are able to instant message and they can call home. Back in Vietnam, they didn't have that. Even in the Gulf War 10 years ago, they didn't have that. I hear a lot more than I want to. It has its good points and bad points, because at least if you know you talk to him every day, you know he's OK. But if a day goes by and you don't hear from him, you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? And you have to remember, no news is good news. It works out. Hey, I wonder if we got online. Oh. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, fucking stop in the kill zone. It was an experiment in authenticity in citizen journalism and a new type of Web 2.0 documentary filmmaking. The internet made this participatory film possible. It's the first war movie filmed by soldiers themselves on the front lines. <laughs> Are we on fire? Down, down, down. Keep going, brother. You want to play? My idea was what if I could establish a relationship of mutual trust and respect and collaborate with these soldiers, give them the cameras, and work with them in a permeable relationship over the internet to tell the story through their eyes. They became, you know, the cameramen and journalists. I'm not supposed to talk to the media. I'm not the media, damn it. I feel by giving the soldiers the power to press record on those cameras in Iraq, we move one degree closer to the essence of what it means to be a soldier on the ground. I've had, uh, I've had guys ask me, said, now, would this be a good training vehicle for soldiers? And I said, not because they wanted it to be. I mean, when they built this game, they wanted to make it authentic, they wanted to make it realistic, and that passion for authenticity actually made it a good training vehicle. And I was able to bring in a, a young soldier, just came back from Afghanistan with me, and uh, talk about different movements, different techniques, how the weapons operated differently. I you know, kind of uh, lipped some ideas, did some motion capture, or at least to try to do a little bit of animation on how he moved, the difference in movement. In the game, I spent a lot of time recreating the way that the breaching would work, and throughout many of the missions, you're going to see your AI comrades stacking up and you know, doing their, their breaching actions. So we've really meticulously recreated that. Facilitating the animators to really see how Marines operate and move, facilitating the artists to take pictures and apply those textures, particularly of utilized weapons, where it's not something drawn from a, you know, a movie armory somewhere, but actually weapons that are worn and have been to Iraq and back and bear those wear marks. All of the Marines that were out there, I guess they had gotten word that there were some of these video game guys coming around. And they're all bringing their gear up and they, they're trying to show us their gear. And we gave them open invitations to come on down and visit us and they were just totally awestruck. A bunch of the guys took us up on our open invitation to come down to Infinity Ward and, and check out the game, which was awesome. They jumped into a multiplayer game. At first they went running every which direction, got slaughtered, and then they're like, all right guys, you know, this is not the first time we've done this. Now let's get together. And then they got together, they were covering each other, they were implementing real-world tactics and just were able to demolish like uh, the testers that they were fighting. And it was just really great. I really believe the Call of Duty teams have gone above and beyond. Some of the Marines have actually come to, wow, this is going to be one heck of a game. You're really showing us in our reality. Having those guys, uh, seeing them, you know, operate, bringing them to the studio and really just added to the uh, authenticity of the game and, and really made it so that uh, you know the Marine Corps can take a lot of pride when they see uh, their, their boys in action in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. You know, we 
really ought to hook a taser up to the genitalia of the player so that when uh, when he gets shot or gets the wound, it's not the little red flash on the screen. And you just see guys whimpering like sick puppies in their basement after playing the game. Yeah. Or just get your sister a wiffle ball bat and let her walk in and nail you a couple times. Oh, Hank. Yeah. <laughs>